boxes and sucks pussy. Son of a bitch! I recently rewatched one of the Slapshot series of videos and realized that another video was possible. Because of the intricacy of Nancy Dowd's script, which cuts in so many different directions and works on so many levels, a reconsideration of the original premise is actually possible, to the point that a convincing, reasoned argument could be made in the opposite direction, that is, that many, even most of the characters in Slapshot actually don't particularly care for Reggie Dunlop. Consider, for example, the Long Island Ducks goalie, Tommy Hanrahan, Christopher Murney. He has to be on a list of any people who might wish Reggie ill for a number of reasons. Because of all the taunting he endures during the game, because of Reggie's dalliance with his wife, which Hanrahan must already be suspecting has occurred, and because everyone on both teams, and probably the league, now knows something about Hanrahan's marriage which he would have preferred remain unknown. Any way you look at it, Hanrahan definitely has no use for Reggie Dunlop. After Ned Braden scores a goal against Syracuse and is then challenged by and declines to fight Tim McCracken, Reggie benches Ned, Michael Onkin, and taunts him about his wife Lily leaving him. As a result, Ned punches Reggie in the face and just prior to this had denigrated Reggie. I just scored a goal, you fucking has We don't want you to score goals. They want blood to burn you. In the end, Braden plays a finesse game and he deeply resents that Reggie is trying to make him adopt a different style of play. Additionally, Braden oftentimes demonstrates incredulity about Reggie's approach. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna goon it up for you. No? And sometimes heckles Reggie's pep talks. Okay, but Dave's out. Who's gonna take his place? Is the answer Jesus? Somehow they're just not on the same page. After being informed that the Chiefs are folding, Reggie becomes exasperated with the owner, Anita McCambridge, Catherine Walker, and speaks about her son in unflattering terms. He also takes the opportunity to share his evaluation of Anita as both an owner and a person. You could sell us. We're hot. People go nuts for us. You could find a buyer. I don't think you understand finance. You're garbage for letting us all go down the drain. It is actually a little surprising that she doesn't have him banned from the building for the championship game against Syracuse. In any event, Anita disapproves of Reggie's attempt to use violence to attract fans, and she doesn't care whether or not the team is popular or winning, because she never planned to do anything beyond folding it as a tax write-off. She just isn't a fan of the game or Reggie. In point of fact, it's probably a tie as to which of these two characters despise one another more. Francine Dunlop Jennifer Warren, Reggie's wife, is so anxious to get away from Reggie and out of Charlestown that she drives through the middle of the championship parade. Frankly, the parade didn't seem like it would take that long to pass by. To add insult to injury, she is certain that no other franchise, the Nighthawks or otherwise, would ever offer Reggie another job in hockey. The Minnesota Nighthawks! I'm coaching! The Big Apple! Honey, somebody's playing a practical joke on you. No, I got a contract back there in the car! Francine is kind of sick of Reggie's single-minded hockey life and does not really want to have much more to do with him if she can help it. She sees hockey as more of a dead end than anything else. It's unclear whether they will see much of one another in the years to come. Joe McGrath, Struther Martin, surely doesn't appreciate being second-guessed on his personnel decisions as general manager. Boy, every piece of garbage that comes in the market, you gotta buy it! And having Reggie do things like walk out on him when he's trying to talk to him. One season, maybe two, you'll be hanging up the blades and retiring the axe. Yeah, fuck it. Then you'll remember it was Joe McGrath who trained you for the front office. Reggie is not above leveraging an unfortunate, awkward incident from their past to find out who actually owns the Chiefs. Rich, remember how, uh, how I screamed at you when you started coming on to me and I just said, Jesus, stop it, Joe. I'm ashamed of you. Damn you. Also, McGrath might resent Reggie hanging up on him after he calls to talk about Reggie's public announcement that there is now a bounty on the head of Tim McCracken. I'm placing a personal bounty on the head of Tim McCracken. He's the coach and chief punk on that Syracuse team. You can't put a bounty on a man's head! I just did. Reggie's attitude of disrespect spreads to others on the team, such as Ned Braden, who ends up struggling with McGrath in the press box. Throughout the film, Lily Braden, Lindsay Krauss, never quite vibes with Reggie. She doesn't quite get him. With Reggie, she is either sarcastic. Jesus, Lily, there's been three rapes and two murders in this park in one year. I didn't do it. Cruel. Get out! I can get you straight. Beat it! Creeped out. Or dismissive to the point of rudeness.
Lily comes around a little. Championships tend to do that, but she remains incredulous, not totally sold on Reggie. It seems to me that Dave Killer Carlson, Jerry Hauser, might also have a problem with Reggie. After all, Reggie manipulated him into fighting Barkley Donaldson. I know all the other teams laugh at me. Oh, that's not true. Uh, they do. I hear them every game. You know your problem is, Dunlop? You're too fucking old to play this game. Take that sentence back! As hard as Dave Carlson tries to be a fighter, he is clearly not cut out for it. Johnny Upton, Alan Nichols, expresses it best. But Dave was there. Dave's a killer! Yeah, yeah. Dave's a killer! Dave's a mess. It also seems that Barkley Donaldson, Ross Smith, who is on the other end of this, could or should be harboring anger at Reggie for getting him mixed up in it in the first place. The fight serves Reggie's purposes, but both men, Killer and Barkley, are ruthlessly manipulated. It all has a purpose, of course, to fire up the fans, make Charlestown pull together, and to set the stage for the debut of the Hansons. Donaldson is now a new villain for the team to hate, and he has Reggie Dunlop to thank for that. More than anyone else in Slapshot, Dickie Dunn, M. Emmett Walsh, has not a shred of credibility remaining after Reggie is finished with him. Like Barkley, Dickie is treated less like a person and more like a thing or a means to an end. Each story Reggie planted in the local paper would be another nail in the coffin of Dickie's career as a print journalist. Everything he writes regarding the Chief's move to Florida turns out to be fiction. The whole thing does not make him look good. It's as though he never checked a single fact. And incidentally, Reggie's claim... Dickie, they've already built the rink! ...should have been the smoking gun for Dickie. The two men used to be friends, but it is hard to see this continuing unless Reggie can somehow find Dickie some position working for the Nighthawks, maybe in PR somehow. Though Suzanne Hanrahan, Melinda Dillon, clearly has a thing for Reggie, she may not be so kindly disposed towards him after discovering that she's been outed and that Reggie used their tryst to taunt her husband and that everyone in the Federal League now knows all the personal details of her private life. It conflates the personal and the professional as if Reggie is using insider knowledge, pun intended, in order to produce results beneficial to the Chiefs. If you recall, this is the game which Braden labels the garbage win. Suzanne Hanrahan no doubt agrees. It seems likely that Rod Masters, the team's organist, may not think highly of Reggie after the veteran player angrily tears up his sheet music and decrees that Lady of Spain is no longer welcome at the war memorial. Ever play Lady of Spain again? For all we know, it may be the poor man's favorite song. I think this is one person, Tim McCracken, Paul D'Amato, who everyone can agree does not care for Mr. Dunlop. His unique greeting... Hey, McCracken! Dunlop, you suck cock! ...probably requires no further explanation except to give it a little context. This is McCracken's response to hearing that Reggie has publicly placed a bounty on his head. Anyone placing a bounty on your head is probably not an admirer. Like McCracken, the fans in Hyannisport are similarly unimpressed. The fans' animosity is more directed at the whole Charlestown team, but Reggie is clearly the ringmaster of the traveling circus that is the Chiefs. He is responsible for the creation of the team they love to hate. Put another way, if they hate the meal, it's Reggie who was the chef. I've always found that the referee in the Federal League Championship game, Myron Odegaard, who attempts to present Reggie with the Federal League Championship trophy, is actually quite dismissive, even hostile, for someone who's supposed to be impartial. Here you go, you bum! It seems likely that they've had previous dealings that may not have gone satisfactorily. The last people who might have a problem with Reggie could well be the three Hansons, Jack, Steve, and Jeff, played by Dave Hanson, Steve Carlson, and Jeff Carlson. First, Reggie kept them on the bench for a long time. <laughs> what are you guys doing? putting on the foil. Jesus fucking Christ, they don't leave the bench. And second, during the road game in Hyannisport, Reggie asked the police to arrest them because he said they were out of control and needed to be shown a firm hand. For most people, this would feel like a total betrayal on some level by their coach. Somehow, however, I feel that they probably don't hold grudges and will accept that Reggie was doing what was best for the team. 
Also, Reggie is using the boy's notoriety to juice attendance, which again, if they thought about it, is a little exploitive. Again, they might not feel this way at all, so it might cut in the opposite direction. It feels like a saw-off on the Hansons. But there is a question that naturally arises. Who does like Reggie Dunlop? First, the Charlestown fans, albeit only after the Chiefs started winning, not a moment before. Second, Denis Lemieux, Yvonne Barrette, seems to appreciate Reggie's leadership as well as his help with the young lady in the drugstore, Paul Newman's actual daughter, Susan Kendall Newman, trying to make Denis look good in her eyes. You really taught that guy a lesson last night. He was sensational. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that was a big fight. Are you in pain? No, he hurt like hell. Third, Maurice Wanchuk, Brad Sullivan, likes Reggie's company because he knows that Reggie probably won't judge him too harshly, but rather probably sees Maurice as being so outrageously oversexed and creepy that he's like a throwback to another era. Besides, sometimes Maurice has valuable insights as during his exchange about the aesthetics of the ice show with Denis. They are so beautiful. This isn't art, it's a sex. Regarding the ice extravaganza, this may well have the virtue of being true. Lastly, Lily also develops a kind of soft spot for Reggie. He's grown on her, maybe. It's hard to tell though with Lily, I know she's on both lists both ways, but you never know. I figured better safe than sorry. Thank you very much for watching the Slapshot series of videos. The positive response has been heartening. At this time, please consider subscribing if you enjoyed the work. I would like to extend my personal greetings and deepest appreciation to Rye J, Brad W, Richard G, and Mark R for their generous contributions to this channel. It's really humbling to have such loyal viewers. Should you wish to make a contribution, you may do so through one of the donation links found in the description below. Every bit counts at this stage. Please consider making a donation. On this channel, you can actually make a difference. As always, I hope you will return to watch other videos. We win because I score goals! Oh, my ass! We win because I make them crazy!